I want to get these old Nixie tubes up and running again. This was using those obsolete old driver chips where you need one per Nixie tube, but I want to try a more modern high voltage driver, so I made this PCB with today's sponsor, PCB Way. I'll link to information in general on Nixie tubes. I'm not doing a high voltage power supply here. I'm using an off the shelf one, but Generally, I was using 180 volts DC back when I was last running Nixie tubes. So drivers, this one being open drain, one side of the Nixie tube goes to the high voltage power supply through a current limit resistor. The other side of the Nixie tube needs to connect to ground to turn on. So when these drivers are off, it's open drain, nothing's connecting to the Nixie tube. When you turn the output on, you're bringing the Nixie tube to ground, and finally it can fire. I'm using the HV5222, and it says this can handle up to 225 volts, so for me using about 180 volts, this should work fine. This is basically a large 32-bit shift register, so you shift in control signals, whether you want a channel to be on or off, and then you use the output enable to finally latch that data to all of the pins. There's my schematic. So here is the 5222 driver, 32 outputs, so I can drive 32 channels. And if I need 10 outputs to do digits 0 through 9 on each Nixie tube, with 32 channels I can do 3 Nixie tubes and have a couple of spare pins not using any decimal points because my Nixie tubes don't have those. And this chip does run at 12 volt logic, so sometimes a dedicated level shifting IC can be used to take 3.3 or 5 volt logic and convert it to 12 volts. I'm just using NPN transistors because we only need three channels. So on my input side, I've got a power supply and ground input. And I'm expecting to be able to universally switch this around between a 3.3 or a 5 volt circuit. Right now I am using it at 5 volts with the Arduino Nano. So whatever the supply voltage is, I'm taking it and using a boost switching regulator to give me 12 volts out to power this chip. And that also allows me to do level shifting here. As long as I have enough base voltage, 3.3 or 5 volts should allow me to turn on the transistors bringing the output to ground, or when the transistor is off, it's pulled high to 12 volts, so I get 12 volt logic signals. This chip needs a clock, data input, and an output enable, so we clock in all the bits we want to use to control Nixie tubes, then we enable the outputs, and there's also a data out if we want it to cascade multiple stages and get more Nixie tubes. We also have an enable here for this 12 volt power supply, just so that, in this case when I'm using an Arduino Nano, I can let the Nano power up, and that can allow me to do any power up sequencing like the 12 volt power here versus the high voltage supply for the Nixie tubes. All of that can be coordinated off board. This is really meant just for a prototyping thing. Right here I just have LEDs going as a test on the first eight channels mostly to test out the nano sketch because I want to make sure there's only one LED on at a time, which later will translate to one Nixie digit at a time. I wouldn't want a sketch that accidentally turns on all digits in the Nixie tube at the same time. So with this running, I can work on hooking up the actual Nixie tube, high voltage circuit, and continue testing. On the scope, the bottom trace has my clock 5 volt logic input, so it's telling me here we have 5 volts peak to peak. The top trace is one bit moving through the whole shift register every time we clock in 32 bits, because I only want one channel on at a time. So this is a 12 volt transistor output of the data pin. So here the top is 12.2 volts it's saying. So that's telling me I have 5 volt logic in, and I am translating it into 12 volt logic for the driver chip. So this is what's controlling those LEDs right now, one being on at a time. If I had three Nixie tubes and all three of them had one digit on, whenever I clock in all 32 bits, I would expect to have maybe 
three different data bits showing high to turn on one digit on each of three Nixie tubes. And what I'm going to do now is unplug the 5 volt supply for the Nano, which is going to turn off the entire system. And I'll plug it back in just to show what happens on the outputs when this thing powers up and before the Nano initializes. So right there, a bunch of outputs came on at the same time. It doesn't always do that. There appears to be no power on reset and we can't really reset it. All we can do is clock in new data and guarantee the outputs at that point. So to try and guarantee when we power up the outputs are off, we could do a combination of things. We can control the output enable to make sure the outputs are disabled till we're ready. Or we can control the entire 12 volt system here until we're ready using that enable. So we can let the Nano power up, initialize, and then start controlling this driver board, as well as if we want to control the high voltage power supply itself. And one thing to consider when using this for high voltage, right now it's just 5 volts with LEDs, these pins on these chips are very close together. There are specifications recommended for minimum clearance between conductors to satisfy safety requirements for creepage and clearance, and that helps prevent arcing between contacts at high voltages. And we're not deep diving into all of this. This is just bench testing, but anyone who is going to use any sort of a high voltage driver chip where pins may be closely spaced or wiring on a board may be closely spaced, proper safety needs to be considered. So one way to increase the voltage rating would be to add conformal coating over any exposed pins. So that provides extra insulation and allows higher voltage. Now I've taken out those LEDs and I've got a Nixie tube with a high voltage power supply. So it's gonna count from zero to nine on the first 10 outputs of the shift register circuit. And then of course, the system is still cycling through, turning on all the other ones. So there's a delay with nothing happening and then it starts over. If I check the high voltage power supply, I'm at 181 volts. So there's the high voltage power supply. I'm just powering it from a 12 volt bench supply separately from all of this. It's got a common ground with the rest of the system and the high voltage 180 volt output comes to a current limit resistor which goes to the anode on the Nixie tube, and then each of the cathodes go to the driver outputs. So when it's time to come on, each output one by one is connected to that common ground and the tube lights up. If I were going to put this into an installation longer term, maybe I want to use conformal coating on any conductors that are exposed, like the chip pins themselves. If using at high voltage, follow proper safety precautions. 